Hello folks, welcome back to CV Rebuilds. Uh, another episode today, I'm working on my uh, 2021 Gambler 500 car. So this is the Subaru that you guys have seen on the channel, channel before. Um, went ahead and added a snorkel to it. This is for a Pajero. Um, it fits pretty well. I had to make this bracket right here to really stiffen up the top uh, because it obviously doesn't follow the windshield line very well, but the Pajero let you um, get this right in the right spot. I'll try to pop the hood here in a second and show you that. But uh, another thing that I want to add is a fire extinguisher. Um, you know, you see these kits online uh, for Amazon and whatnot that you can put a fire extinguisher right here underneath your uh, seat. But they're like 60 bucks and I, I just can't believe that they have to cost that much. So, um, I got my extendable ratchet breaker bar, 14 millimeter uh, socket, six point, because this one was very rusty. I wanted to make sure I didn't spin it. So I got the six point socket. And I took these two bolts out. Um, this would be kind of hard to do one handed, but basically I grabbed the measurement right here to the center of the bolt hole. I got 16 and 5 eighths. Um, that's just what the measurement is. I'm sure in metric it comes out to something perfect, but that's what it is for me. So I got a piece of aluminum right here and I cut it to one inch longer than I need. And then I came back and drilled holes with my step drill, um, just a little bit bigger than the bolt so they have a little bit of adjustment. So this piece of aluminum is, um, I think it's 3 16 if I remember. It's been a long time since I ordered it. 3 16 I cut it to 17 and 5 eighths long, moved my holes in half an inch so that I could get the center to center uh, that matches the, the seat bracket here. So from there to there. And uh, I drilled this out, and that's where I'm at right now. Um, it doesn't fit perfect yet. Looks like over here, I'm going to take this corner off to get that to uh, sit down there flush or where it's supposed to be. But I think, you know, that's, that's going to work pretty well. So I'm going to take this corner off right here. Um, the other thing that, you know, as I'm doing this, at least what I'm seeing, is that I need to move this fire extinguisher very close to this side almost um, with the fire extinguisher right above the bolt. And that's so that this lever here on the seat can can go uh, past the, sorry, past the front of the fire extinguisher as it's mounted. Uh, just in case somebody else hops in here and wants to drive it when it's not me. Uh, I can't imagine that too many people in my family are gonna wanna drive it just because of, uh, they're starting to think it looks ridiculous with the snorkel and whatnot, but uh, that's what we're going to work on, uh, finish up in this episode. Um, it's just this fire extinguisher mount. Uh, like I said, the ones I saw online for people that go to track days and stuff, um, they're, you know, like $60, $70 just for, just for a piece of metal with some adjustment to let you bolt to the front of your rail. And, uh, I can't imagine that this won't do the job. I mean, this fire extinguisher, I don't remember exactly the size, uh, but this is a Marine. Uh, fire extinguisher so that you know it covers fuels and oils and everything and it'd be really good for you know a gambler or any kind of car if, it, if I were to meet somebody else that needed to put a fire out but I want to make this adjustment and get this kind of uh, rough fitted but like I said I promised you guys I'd show you the snorkel and how that works so I pop the hood oh, okay so on the at least the 2.5 Subaru. It's very convenient because the air box is, you know, right here. We've got this elbow that comes off, and then in this area, obviously, was the stock uh, air box. I just used some Street 45s and a Street 90 in two inch. And here you can see where I was talking about the Pajero um, air intake brought it in. There was already kind of a factory hole. Um, this bottom half right here is factory. I took a three inch hole saw and made this hole up here just a little bit bigger and then an angle grinder to kind of straighten it up so that it wasn't so jagged. I did have to move this ground. This ground used to live uh, somewhere about right here. I moved it back um, to another hole, just drilled a hole and put it in there. But you can see that the Pajero uh, snorkel here fits really well. Um, the only thing, like I said, is that uh, it doesn't quite match the angle. I'll, I'll put the 
hood down so you can see that. Maybe I'd do a better job of that. But I uh, just use rubber couplers for a two inch pipe. Um, loosen these clamps up a little bit out and then stretch it over. And I can tell you it works really well because uh, the car will all but stop if I put my hand over the top here. So if I take this, this uh, part off, it's just a round pipe right here, put my hand over it, the car will all but stop. So that's an air leak. It could be from the air box joints, um, you know, factory or even around the air filter. So I think it's gonna be pretty effective. Uh, definitely keep the uh, water out of the engine because you know, air will take the path of least resistance. So it should come right down this big old snorkel before it comes into the little tiny cracks. But um, here you can see it does match the angle of the hood pretty nice or the sorry the the car it does set a little crooked i don't know if that bothers anybody it, it bothers me just a little bit but for right now i'm not going to do anything about it but uh you know i didn't want it to stick out here because then it has a chance of getting ripped off so at least if it's over the body anywhere that i think that the you know roof line can go the snorkel should be able to go to so that's kind of how you know i'm getting my car set up for the gambler but let's finish this bracket uh, just so that we can uh, get this fire extinguisher mounted. One other thing I wanted to kind of cover uh, since I had the opportunity to do it is that I'm running some bigger tires on this car than uh, you're supposed to. So factory, the tires would have been 205-55R16 on this wheel. I did add the Forrester uh, strut lift in there as you guys saw in a previous video and uh, I pushed it a little further trying to get some more uh, tire, a little, a little more grip and now I have Yokohama 215 65 r16s so they do fit um there's just a little bit of room there and uh behind the strut there's plenty of clearance i haven't seen any rubbing uh but that might give you guys a super uh, you subaru guys a little bit of information that you can run larger tires on your stock wheels if you do this uh forester lift i can't say that it will work with the spacer lift i think it won't because uh, the way that this top hat is adjusted with the uh, Forester struts, that it's not adjusted with the um, Preza struts or Outback struts. So just uh, food for thought, if you guys give yourself that uh, factory, uh, I'll use my air quotes, factory uh, lift, you can run a taller tire on a stock wheel and not have any rubbing. So just uh, wanted to share my experience with that. Let's finish up this uh, fire, sting fire extinguisher mount. All right, folks, so I was able to pull this rivet very easily because it's uh, very high. Uh, this rivet over here, I can't really get down to the face of the rivet uh, to pull against it with the rivet tool. So what I'm going to try to do here is take some um, stainless steel wa uh, washer nuts or whatever these things are and kind of build these up to uh, allow the rivet tool to have something solid to pull against. So let's give it a shot. All right, so that might be um, too too much that the mandrel's not long enough. So we'll take one of them off here. Let's try it again. All right, so there, pull the mandrel out. And uh, let's take this out of the vise. Take our spacer out, and you can see down there, we got a nice uh, flush set and uh, the rivets pulled very nicely. So now we're ready to basically go in and install this. Um, shouldn't be too much to it. Just cover a couple more details uh, that I did. So like I said earlier, you know, I cut this 45 or whatever angle. And then uh, the holes, I didn't drill any bigger, but I brought in and I cut these as slots just to give myself a little more adjustment. 
uh, going down the line. And I'm not sure how you guys cut aluminum, uh, but I found that my circular saw actually with a wood cutting blade does a really good job. So it's just, you know, circular saw, battery operated circular saw. And I just use that, just real careful. With, the, with aluminum, it doesn't give you any problem. Um, I haven't seen any issue and it still cuts wood really well. So I don't think it dulls the blade that much. I'm sure it wears some, but not enough that I'm concerned. So let's uh, go get these bolts in and uh, check out this mount. All right, folks, got the bracket installed here. And you can see um, that I did roll the fire extinguisher over. So this handle is down. And I just kind of made sure that this, this uh, sorry, that this handle right here wasn't close to this uh, lever. So with that lever down, you can see here, you can take the seat back and forth. Going forward's a little more difficult. Well, one thing um, right here, I am running uh, very close, very close right here for the seat track to the fire extinguisher, but Anybody who's gonna drive this car is not gonna be sitting that close. Uh, most of the people that I know are pretty tall, so they will run with the seat back. So it also makes the fire extinguisher more ex visible. So we'll see if this, uh, you know, lever right here makes a bunch of noise, if that really bothers me, but I think it's gonna be fine because it's sitting down here on the carpet. And even if we turn the fire extinguisher like that, the only thing that might be a problem is that something might fall right here in the nozzle but I kind of doubt that's going to be a big issue uh, these things have quite a bit of pressure when they are dispensing so it shouldn't be a problem but I don't know you guys can let me know what you think um, maybe maybe it would be better to make this out of steel out of aluminum I don't know I just couldn't justify spending $60 on a pre-made bracket with all the adjustment when all you really need is uh couple of holes drilled and a couple slots cut and you can see here that I mean it's mounted in here real solidly I don't think it'll affect the seat any um, because there's other bolts in the back of the seat and these kind of just the way they are are kind of more like locating pins so I think we'll be okay but uh, there you go there's an idea on how to build yourself a fire extinguisher mount uh, pretty inexpensively uh, Thanks for watching, and I'll uh, catch you guys in another video soon.